So the first season of Fallout has just been released on Amazon Prime, and it's the latest video game franchise to get a TV series. In recent times, we've had The Last of Us, Halo, Twisted Metal, and now this. So where does it sit amongst these? Well, it definitely sits towards the top, with a gripping story at its core. In fact, make that several stories at its core, a great twist at the end, and characters that you really do connect with and root for. Let's jump into this video and break down all that there was to take away from the show. Here is Fallout Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. The Ending Explained the ending of this show can be directly attributed to a line that was spoken in episode 6 of the show. The end of the world is a product, haunting words, and the sole reason for vault Tech being hopeful on its ability to thrive is the fact that it was relying on a war breaking out and the country being the victim of nuclear warfare, something which we saw was the case in the very first moments of the very first episode. Whilst at the start we were made to believe that Moldova was the bad guy in all of this, it actually turned out that she was essentially the resistance and knew the hidden secrets that vault -Tec were hiding. Like Coop, she was several hundred years old and was a leader of Hollywood Forever which was an organization that looked set to explode vault -Tec back before the bomb was dropped. However, now she was under the New California Republic and wanted the head of Wilsig because he had cold fusion inside of it. By having access to cold fusion, it meant that she could flood endless energy into the city which had spent the past few hundred years essentially acting as a wasteland, meaning that conditions for the survivors above ground could potentially change. They would be sprung from the Dark Ages and propelled forward into the next developmental period. This was the sole reason why she wanted Hank, Lucy's father, as a hostage, because the only way that cold fusion could be activated once had was by a trusted vault -Tec employee. At the time of the flashbacks, Hank was merely an assistant to Barb, so he must have clearly worked his way up the ladder in a short amount of time to have gained access to the secret codes. We also found out during the ending that Hank was the sole person that was responsible for the destruction that was caused on Shady Sands. Rose, Hank's wife, and Lucy's mother found out the truth about Hank's past and the fact that he wasn't born in the vault like he said he was, and that he was involved with vault Tech. So following that discovery, she took Lucy and her brother Norm and wanted to live above ground. This meant that the sun that Lucy said that she once felt on her skin when she was younger, which she thought was inside of the vault, was the actual sun beating down on her. With Rose refusing to go back to the vault, Hank dropped a bomb on Shady Sands, meaning that the city was destroyed. All 30 odd thousand people of it were impacted and the ideology that vault -Tec had to wipe out everybody above ground and create their own perfect population which they could control could continue. With Lucy finding this out, she turned on her father and realized that her entire life was essentially a lie. vault -Tec were the enemies in all of this. They dropped the initial bombs because they needed their product to sell. With over 100 vaults around the country, the stakeholders were essentially allowed to play god with the people that were inside of the vaults. This is why Vault 4 was so different to Vault 33, because each one was essentially an experiment. Other than Vault 31, the vault which contained the frozen bodies in the pods of the important people at vault Tech for when it was safe for them to resurface, time and management were the most powerful weapons, so being able to hold onto the minds of the people that planned this whole thing and were involved in orchestrating it was vital to enabling the survival of the planet and then morphing it into the world that they wanted it to be. None of the other vaults really mattered to them. The humans in them were essentially lab rats and ways for them to make money. During the climax of the episode, Coop laid his eyes on Hank for the first time in hundreds of years and asked him the question of where his family was, showing us that Barb and Janie were actually still alive 200 years after the disaster that was planned. It does make me wonder if Barb is actually the person who Hank was arriving at towards the end. Let's remember, she was the person who came up with the idea to drop the bomb on the states in the first place, making it seem like an act of war was declared on them. With Hank arriving at New Vegas right at the end of the season, could Barb be there? That's something that I guess we're just going to have to wait until season 2 to find out. Personally, I feel like she could be. She could be that very person that's behind the wheel that Coop mentioned. Now that would be a twist. Norm's Journey Norm's journey was all about having some kind of redemption arc, which contained growth. He was an individual that wasn't interested in anything about vault life. He wasn't happy, motivated, and didn't care in the slightest about life pre the invasion from the surface dwellers. In fact, he cowered and hid when the people that he cared about were being killed. 
This was something that sat within his mind for a long while and he felt the weight of. So much so that when Chet was called upon to migrate over to Vault 32, he called him a coward because he wasn't doing anything about what they both saw when they saw the people that were slaughtered and killed there. This is why Norm was so invested in being able to make a difference and to get to the bottom of what it was that was going on between Vault 31, 32 and 33. The only thing that we found out that Norm was interested in was computers. And that's how he was able to hack into Vault 33 Overseer's computer and reach out to the Overseer of Vault 31 and arrange a meeting with them. Once he was inside of Vault 31, he saw the pods which contained the people that had been frozen from 200 years ago and realized that his entire life had been a lie and was in vain. He was just a part of an experiment of some suit wanting to play God. However, with him being trapped inside of Vault 31 and potentially needing to get into his father's pods so that he could stay alive for that amount of time, he was now the complete opposite to a coward like he was in the first episode. He transformed and was drastically different to when we first saw him. I do wonder what this means for the character though. He's going to have to get into one of these pods in order to survive. So does that mean that he's written out of the next season and only coming back when Vault 31 resurfaces? Maybe. The Transformation of Lucy Lucy was the main character in this show and I think her arc is best described by what Willisig said to her in episode 2 of the show. He said, Will you still want the same thing when you're a different animal altogether? This was spoken to her on the first night that she spent in the wasteland where she was naive to the world and didn't know how to function outside of a vault. She'd never killed, was overly polite, and followed the golden rule that she believed in. So when faced with people from the surface, she was essentially alien to the culture and the lawless land that she found herself in. Over the course of the show, she killed, threw acid at a person, and even killed her own mother when she found out that she was the ghoul that had essentially turned and was sitting on the table that was alongside Moldava. I think she did that out of mercy though, knowing that her mother was going to be killed by the Brotherhood when they arrived. Lucy cared for her father, hence why she went to go and rescue him. She flung herself into the unknown to save him, but it was all for nothing. Her entire life was a lie, and after being on the surface, going through everything that she did, such as finding love, seeing a different vault, Vault 4 as a strange place, and becoming more of a surface dweller, she was now no longer that same animal and wanted different things. Hence why she went off with Coop right at the end to get to the person that was behind the wheel of the chaos that was unfolding in front of their very eyes. Seeing the both of them together at the end, after knowing what their relationship was like at the start, was a great way for the characters to develop. She was more like Coop than she was her father, and I thought that was a great direction for them to go in. Maximus achieved his goal. Maximus's goal from when he was younger was to make it as a knight in the Brotherhood. We saw that he was rescued by one following the bomb being dropped on Shady Sands, and from that day he found a home with the Brotherhood and wanted to become the hero that was once in front of him. However, with him meeting Lucy, seeing what life inside of a vault was like, and realizing that there's a place that exists that doesn't involve death and devastation, he wanted that. However, right at the end, with Max waking up after being knocked out by Lucy's father, the Brotherhood arrived into the room and Dane announced that he slayed the leader, Moldava, which led everybody to proclaim him to be Knight Maximus, something that he always wanted. However, now, his priorities had changed. He saw the Brotherhood for what it truly was, an order that led with an iron fist and wanted to hold power over the wasteland just as much as everybody else did. This was shown to us when Quintus told him that he wanted to rule the surface. With the Brotherhood now having cold fusion in the palm of their hands and the ability to provide energy to the city, it feels like that's something that they're going to use to their advantage and as leverage over the people that live there, meaning that they hold more power than they could have possibly ever imagined. My review of the show. I thought the first season of Fallout was really good. It took me by surprise with how good it was to be honest. After the opening section with the way that the bombs dropping was executed, it kind of felt like this was going to be something good. That drew me in instantly. From the visuals to the set design to the makeup to the writing and the delivery of the characters, it just delivered on everything that it wanted and needed to in order to make it convincing and gripping. My favorite character in the show was definitely Coob. I really enjoyed going back and forth between the time periods and watching his relationship deteriorate, but also seeing the state of the world at that time. Plus, seeing all of that, it also allowed us to see why he behaved the way that he did in the present day and the certain traits that he had. He witnessed the demise and destruction of the world firsthand through the eyes and ears of the person that he loved most in the world. His character was so complex and conflicted, and I loved that about him. Plus, he was a total badass, and his arrogance was something that was just hilarious to witness. One other thing that I loved about this show was the choice of songs that would be played in the background. 
It felt like they were all exclusively from between the 1930s and the 1950s, and it really gave off that wartime and post-war vibe that the show was really trying to set. Even though it wasn't set in the same time period and was nearly 300 years later, the message, meaning, and sound of the songs provided a haunting yet appropriate backdrop to everything that we were watching. It definitely feels like season 2 of the show is going to be made. I mean, it has to be, right? I feel like there's not been many good 8 episode shows dropping all at once in a long while, and despite the date change and schedule change, I think Amazon almost got it right. The only thing that I wish they'd done differently would be in releasing the episodes weekly. I think that appetite for more would have gone in its favour massively. But it's not like that can be undone. I guess we're just going to have to wait and see how well the show does before Season 2 gets confirmed, but I'm confident that one will be on the way eventually. So, there you have it. Fallout Ending Explained. As always, thanks for tuning into the video and I'll see you in the next one.